comes and indwells them and the Holy Spirit is with them forever. Now I want you to turn to John chapter 1 verse 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. All right, let's go now to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Everyone say new covenant. So we know there is an old covenant or an old testament and a new testament or a new covenant. Paul is referring to the new covenant here and he says not of the letter referring to the old because the old or the law points to the ten commandments that were handwritten by God on the mountain. But the new covenant is of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. The Spirit gives life. So do you know that there are two covenants, the old and the new. The old is the law. And the law came by Moses. Moses was a servant. The new covenant, grace and truth, came through Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the Son. Now which is greater, the servant or the Son? The Son. Who receives more glory and honor in the house of the Father? The servant or the Son? It's the Son. And that is why today we have a better covenant established on better promises because the new covenant is established in the blood of Jesus Christ based on grace and truth. And it is not of the letter, of the law, but it is of the Spirit. That means it is full of life and power. You see, the law always points to the letter, whereas grace always points to the Spirit, who is life and power to us. So don't ever honor the servant above the Son. Don't ever go back to the servant in the place of the Son. And that is what sometimes Christians do. Instead of understanding we are in a covenant of grace, we go back to the covenant of the law. Or sometimes we mix it up. We love Jesus, but we still want to go back under the law. The law refers to self-righteousness, performance that is based on your own ability. But today we don't live on our own ability. We live in Christ's ability. We live with Christ's righteousness. We are sufficient because of His grace. Can you say amen? Now the important thing to understand here is this. When we say it's a new covenant of grace... What we're also saying is that it's a new covenant of the Spirit. And the purpose of the Spirit is this. In John 1.17, the Bible says, Jesus comes to bring us grace and truth. Can you say grace and truth? Grace. Now grace, we understand what is truth. The word truth needs to be understood more than just the English definition of it. We need to understand it in spiritual terms. The word truth is the Greek word aletheia. And it simply means, what is the truth about the matter? Simply. But it also means this. What is the reality or the fact of anything? And it also means truth or reality pertaining to God. So we can say truth is really the reality of God. Now in John chapter 14 verse 16, Jesus said, He is, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So in other words, the Holy Spirit is the one sent from the Father to us so that He can make God real to us. He's the Spirit of truth. He's the Spirit of reality. He's the one who brings the letters back to life. It illuminates the reality of God to us so that we can really know God, who He says He is. For example, Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says, We have not been given a spirit of fear again to bondage, but we have been given the spirit of sonship by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. See, this verse tells us that there is a reality of God 
the fatherhood of God, God as a daddy God, that we will never know unless the Holy Spirit comes and illuminates our heart, touches our heart, brings revelation to our heart. The Holy Spirit brings that power to our heart. And when we know God, not only as God, but as Daddy, as Abba Father, then our hearts will truly cry out, Daddy God. So this is something more than the best books and the best libraries can help us. Because I know of people and I've met some of them who teach the Bible, who talk about God in some of the best universities in the world, and yet they don't know God. Why? No Holy Spirit. They're not born again. So the new covenant of grace is not only a covenant of grace, it's a covenant of the Spirit. See, when we are born again, we are born again of the Spirit. When the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, it was birthed in the power of the Spirit. We are supposed to walk in the Spirit. So these are the main points of the introduction. Write it down. Number one, you cannot know God at all. You cannot have a relationship with God. You cannot know God intimately unless the Holy Spirit helps you. Even knowing the Bible is not good enough. Without the Holy Spirit, the words of the Bible are dead words. It takes the author of the Bible, who is the Holy Spirit, to breathe life into these words. And then it becomes a reality. Born again becomes reality. Power of Holy Spirit becomes reality. Who is God becomes a reality. It is not just theory. It is not just a logic. It's real. And I know, and I know, and I know, and I know today, I know I am born again. I know and I know I am loved by God. Why? The Holy Spirit witnesses to the truth of this word so deep within me that I cannot doubt at all. Secondly, we cannot walk in a new covenant of grace without the Holy Spirit. Because it's a covenant of the Spirit. In the old, it was the letter. In the new, it's the Spirit who gives life. God writes His commandments in our hearts. How? By the Holy Spirit. See, the tablets were given through Moses to the Israelites so that the Israelites know God. Today, God doesn't give us tablets. God gives us the Spirit. The Spirit has replaced the tablets. I'm not saying we don't need the tablets. We need what is written there in order to understand what is holiness and to be enabled by the Spirit to walk in what is written there. So how important it is for you and I to know the Holy Spirit. Three words I want to share about right now. Fellowship, partnership, and profit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit will lead to partnership with the Holy Spirit. Partnership with the Holy Spirit will lead to profit in your life. How many of you want to profit spiritually? So first, let's look at the word fellowship. Because God wants us to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Many people know the Holy Spirit simply as power, anointing fire, new wine. And that is why they come to the Holy Spirit only when they have a need. When they need healing, when they need deliverance, they look for somebody who is anointed, used by God in that area, so that they can be helped. But that is not how God wants us to treat the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. That means you can have a relationship with Him. You can have fellowship with Him. He's more than just power or anointing or gifts. God wants us to have relationship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship means to relate with someone in a friendly, informal basis. Talk about things of mutual interest with a mutual attraction for one another. That is fellowship. In simple terms, it simply means talk. Talk. To someone. Because the moment you start talking, that's where fellowship begins. Communication. It begins with acknowledgement. If you have a guest who comes to your house, sits in your common room from 9 a.m. in the morning, and now it's already 12 o'clock, and you are still not out of your bed, and by 3 p.m. you wake up slowly, you are groggy, and you peep through the door, and your friend is waiting for you, you just ignore him and then you walk out of the house doing your own thing. 
ignoring him for six, seven hours, he will get the message that you don't like him. You don't want to be in relationship. You don't want to have fellowship. But when somebody comes to your house and you receive them with warmth, you receive them with honor, you just are so enthusiastic. You sit down and you talk to them and you give them attention. What does it mean? It means that there is a mutual fellowship that is beginning. It means that now there is a mutual attraction that is emerging. Well, how many of you know the moment you got born again, there is a guest that came into your living room? Not back home there, here, here. The living room of your life, your heart, your spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in us. How many of you have Christ? Can I see your hands? The Spirit lives within you. In fact, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. This is a verse you need to memorize. Especially if you're struggling with fear in any way. Afraid of the dark. Afraid of some weird prophecies that may come. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 is for you. The Bible says, you are of God, little children. You are of God. Turn to a neighbor and say, you are of God. And you have overcome them because he who is in you. Oh, somebody is in me? Yes. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who is in the world? Satan and his armies. But the one who lives in you is greater. Everyone say greater. There is somebody living on the inside of you. The question is this, do you acknowledge him every day? Do you talk to him? Do you fellowship with him? You see, fellowship with the Holy Spirit is just like fellowshipping with the Father. You get up in the morning, you say, thank you, Father. You talk to Jesus, Jesus, I need your help. In the same way, talk to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are my helper. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, welcome. Hallelujah. This morning into my life. He lives in you. He's all around you at all times. All that we need to do is acknowledge Him. Because the point of acknowledgement is the beginning of communication. Because the moment you start talking to Him, you'll be surprised when He talks back to you. You see, you need the Holy Spirit and acknowledge His ministry. We know why? Every time you talk to Jesus, every time you talk to the Father, you pray to the Father, and something happens in your life, do you know that it was the Holy Spirit? It was not the Father. It was not Jesus. When you prayed to Jesus and you prayed with all your heart, and there was such a feeling of peace, it was not Jesus. It was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agent through which God transmits His presence, His power, and His miracles. When Jesus healed, it was the Holy Spirit through Him. When the bread was multiplied, it was the Holy Spirit through Jesus. It was not Jesus in a sense because that is how the Trinity functions. You see, in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, Paul says, May the love of the Father... The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the sweet communion. Everyone say sweet communion. The word communion is the word koinonia. And koinonia means sharing. And the Bible says, Paul says, your, your, your fellowship with the Holy Spirit is supposed to be so sweet. So sweet. Here, sweet. So sweet. Sharing. Talking to Him all through the day. Fellowshipping with him, acknowledging him, telling him, I love you, telling him, I need you, you are my helper, thank you so much that you're always with me, greater is he, you are greater in me than he who is in the world, always talking. And you can share with him in any area of your life, your relationships, your business, your investments, about your school, about what you want to study in life. You can talk about everything. And you'll be surprised how he wants to talk to you about every area of life, even about what you are eating. Because the Holy Spirit is sent to help us. I was listening to the story from one of the executives of God TV about a Sadar in Delhi who got saved watching God TV. And while this executive met the Sadar who designs bikes, custom bikes, the Sadar told him, you know, I just talked to him because the people in God TV told me to talk to him. So he's so obedient. 
in church today, we tell people to talk to God. They're like, oh, okay, I've heard this so many times. And we don't even practice it. He practiced it. And he told the executive from God TV, when I'm designing my bikes, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me and telling me, don't design it this way, design it that way. Or you mean to say the Holy Spirit is interested in carnal things like designing? Yes. You know why? Because the first time in the Bible when the Holy Spirit filled a human being, which is mentioned in the Bible, is the book of Exodus, a man called Bezalel. He was no preacher. He was no leader. He was no pastor. He was a craftsman. He never preached. But he was filled. He is the smartest person, the brightest person in your life. And he lives in you. He knows every detail about your life. He knows every detail about your future. He knows what you are good at. God has a different purpose. God has a different calling. The Holy Spirit knows. Why don't you just spend more time talking to Him? Spend time talking to the Holy Spirit. And He will reveal that to you. Fellowship will lead to partnership. Everyone say partnership. Partnership means working together with the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, Paul says that we are to work together with the Holy Spirit so that the grace of God is not in vain. We then, as workers together with Him, plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. As workers together. Everyone say workers together. Workers together with Him. Paul included the Holy Spirit into his ministry as a co-worker, as his partner. So that the grace of God will not be in vain. Why? The Holy Spirit is the one sent to, in a sense, implement grace in our lives. Release grace in our lives. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 14. The Bible says, the good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Every one of you have been committed good things, gifts, talents, abilities, resources, wisdom. Whatever you have been committed to by God, keep by the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 15 verse 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. This was the first crisis the apostles faced in the early church about the disciples of Paul from the Gentile churches. The early church was only Jews who became Christians. But then Paul had a ministry to the Gentiles and the Gentiles started getting saved. So some of the Jews began to go and teach that you also need to be circumcised like us and to keep the laws and to keep the commandments for the Jews. So there was a divide that happened in the early church. How do we solve this? And so when they convened the first council in Jerusalem, they concluded by saying, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and also to us to lay no unnecessary burdens. In other words, the Gentiles should not become Jews. But notice that phrase. It seemed good first to the Holy Spirit and then to us. They did not say, it seemed good to us first. Now let's ask the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the senior partner, not the junior partner. Many of us treat him as a junior partner. He is the senior partner, meaning we go to him first. Sometimes people come with investment ideas. This sounds interesting. Let's do it. Oh, this is just a great opportunity. I'm all right. As a Christian, you ask the Holy Spirit first. He's your senior partner. Oh, he's my senior partner in church, but in my business, I am the senior partner. No. Do you know he's a better businessman than you? Do you know that he knows what's going to happen in the economy next year? He knows what's going to happen in the world economy in the five years. He knows it. The Holy Spirit knows. See, usually what we do is this. This is what we have decided. Now let's ask the junior partner to bless it. Let's ask God to bless it. See, the step that you're about to take, where you're going to study, who you're going to marry, and so on, does it seem good to the Holy Spirit? You need to ask that. Because the Holy Spirit can communicate. He's a person. And He communicates primarily here. 
here through the presence of peace or the lack of peace. Sometimes through visions and dreams and prophecies, but all of that will corroborate with what is within here. Does it seem good to the Holy Spirit? So learn to put the Holy Spirit first in your life, in all areas. Learn to put Him first. Don't do things without seeking His counsel, His input. How? Talk to Him. But pastor, I don't know how to talk to Him. You can. You spend one hour talking to a phone, imagining that there's someone at the end. So why don't you just imagine your phone is the Holy Spirit. Tonight, just put a little tape over the phone, Holy Spirit. Don't switch it on and just speak to the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible says He lives within you. It means simply believe that the moment you talk to the Holy Spirit, He is listening. And He may not reply back as fast as you want to. He may not talk back to you as a human being does, but He will. You need to develop that kind of fellowship. Because fellowship will lead to partnership, and partnership will lead to profit. God wants to help you profit in every area of your life. Wherever you go, the Holy Spirit is with you. Do you know He's in the bus with you? On the flight, He's with you. If you understand that and you know He's always with you, that's one of the keys to overcoming fear. He's always in you. He's always with you. Even when you fall, make a mistake, sin inadvertently, He does not leave you. When David prayed, take not your Holy Spirit from me, it was in the Old Testament. It was not in the New. He doesn't take His Holy Spirit from us. Amen. Just a few weeks back, I was planning a trip to some faraway place to meet a friend to minister to him because he's having some sickness. I prayed. It was a good motive, a good intention. I was even about to buy the ticket. But something in my heart would just not be complete. It was not right. About to buy the ticket, press the button by. I just kept on postponing it. Something was not right. So I decided finally, I'm just going to obey the Spirit. My senior partner is telling me, mm mm, mm mm. So I canceled it. A few days after that, I got an information that that friend is also leaving that city and coming back. And so on that very day that I would be there, he would not be there. I would have lost all that money in buying the ticket. It profited me to listen to my senior partner. Why? Because my senior partner has been to the month of August. I have not been. My senior partner has been to heaven because he is God himself. He has looked at all the register concerning me. Ah, December, oh, January, oh, 2025. Yes, he has seen everything in God's register for your life. And he lives in you. And he can't wait to tell you. Ah, that's that secret, you know. Oh, that juicy gossip from heaven. What are you going to do in 2025? He can't wait to tell you because he has seen it. Yeah, but you are ignoring him. Because you think your friend knows more than the Holy Spirit. But it's a partnership. It's by our willingness we open up our lives to Him. And then we will experience His partnership. A lady in our church shared a testimony some years back about how when she was praying, the Holy Spirit gave her a business idea. So she took what the Holy Spirit spoke to her and did that business and that business boomed roared with huge financial profits for her. And how did that come about? In a season of just seeking God, listening to His Word, resting and listening, resting, developing that fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You see, to hear the Holy Spirit, we need to be free from strife in our heart. We need to be rested. Calm down. Have a day every week where you are rested, like Sunday, listening to Him. Like right now, when you are listening to God through the sermon, the Holy Spirit is also speaking to you. And the Holy Spirit can speak to you about things of your life that you need to hear from Him. Like a relationship. If there's no rest about that relationship, it's always strife and strife and restlessness when you think about that person or that relationship. You know what it means? Time to kill that cow. You need to listen to him, your senior partner. Not only 
in acknowledging Him and talking to Him. But being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the gift of speaking in other tongues. One of the best ways to fellowship with the Holy Spirit is to pray in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Why? Because the Bible says when you speak in another tongue, you are speaking to God. You're talking to God. You're fellowshipping with God. You're communing with God. And that is how you build your fellowship with God, your sensitivity to the presence of God. And you're able to make the Holy Spirit your senior partner so that your spiritual life will profit. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Well, we have come to the end of the message and I am convinced that you are blessed. If you have prayer needs in any areas of your life, feel free to email us or contact us on the numbers given on the screen. We are ready to pray for you. We will see you next week at the same time. God bless you.